lines in the world between the Mayo Clinic and the university system. We have the largest medical device industry in the world. We have the largest healthcare services business in the world in Minnesota, which by the way isn't allowed to sell insurance to people in Minnesota because of regulation. We, we can we can we can do better. Can you be a lot more specific on exactly what you would see Minnesota do? But state programs that the state had already on. Uh, and, and Rachel, when I think about health care, I think there's three legs to the stool. There's cost, there's accessibility, and there's quality. And, and, and there's interplay between those three. And so things that I want to absolutely see addressed is I want to see, uh, I believe that people with pre-existing conditions should be able to buy health insurance at a reasonable rate. And I think if you look at the numbers, there's 5.15 million people that fit in that category. We have 311 million Americans. So from a business standpoint, as a problem solver, what I'd say is we have 5 million people that are high risk pool. What's the best way the most effective, the most efficient way to subsidize this high risk pool. And it, 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 so when I look at, you know, let's look back at the cost, accessibility, and, and uh, quality on cost. There's something really simple that we can do. It's called transparency. I mean, you hear a lot of people talk about accountability. And I'm a big, big fan and proponent of accountability, but you got to have transparency before you can have accountability. And in the healthcare industry, we have a lack of transparency. If I have to go to the drugstore to get cholesterol medicine, because I have high cholesterol, if I'm at Walgreens or CVS, I can tell the price of anything in front of the counter, but I have no idea what the price is behind the, the, the pharmacy. I don't know if I can get a better price at CVS or Walgreens. If I have to go get a knee replacement, which is a pretty standard procedure, there's there's no place I can look to find out what the cost is. I mean, it, it, we need more transparency. When there's things that we can do, so transparency is one. The second is there are federal regulations that need to be looked at. One is insurance. I'd like to see the insurance agency the industry deregulated. Coupled with that, I'd like to see us make the tax code agnostic to who's buying insurance. I mean, we currently have a situation that's set up where there's a huge incentive from a tax standpoint for people to get insurance through their place of employment. Because if I get insurance through my employer, it's tax deductible. If I buy it myself, it's not. I would like to see everyone treated equal. I'd like to see individuals be able to buy, get the same tax treatment that corporations do. I think that that's fair. And if individuals were responsible for buying their insurance as opposed to getting it through their place of employment, I think it would start to look a lot more like insurance as opposed to a prepaid medical plan. People would shop the same way that you shop for car insurance, homeowner's insurance, that's that's when the market works. You know, another area of cost is is, is tort. We need to make that. Um, this idea that you can't find out how much the tort costs at CVS or Target, it's not accurate. I mean, you can find out those prices. I have a health partners plan and I can go online and look for certain medications and find out exactly what it's going to cost if I go to Sam's Club or Target. And so, there maybe needs to be more transparency, but there already is a much more transparency now than it was maybe five years ago, yet costs are still... Well, Mark, I, I appreciate you letting me know that. Because as a consumer, I didn't know that. You know, I, I'm maybe a little bit old, old fat. Um, I just go to the store and, and I look for prices. And I last time I was there, I couldn't find it. And so there, there's, there's, um, there's, an opaque, there's an opaqueness to, to the system. And I think everybody would... I wanted to ask something on another topic too. Uh, 
I've been trying to get a declarative yes or no answer from you on personhood legislation. You were asked the question of debate, and you said you supported that you're pro-life at conception. Can you give me a declarative yes or no as to whether you support personhood legislation? Yes, yeah, so, so Mark, thanks for asking the, the question. Um, when the last time I had a press conference, uh, when I announced it last summer, one of the things that, that I stated and I feel strongly about was when I left my job to run for the U.S. Senate against Senator Franken, I ran, I made that decision to focus on getting this economy going, creating jobs, getting rid of Obamacare and replacing it with something that's better, so fixing health care. And I have a huge passion for education and I know we can do that. And that's going to be my focus. My focus is not going to be on polarizing issues. And as I've gone around the state over the last nine months, that's what Minnesotans want. They want to focus on the economy. They want a better job. They want a health care system that works. They want education that's first class. They don't want a continued uh, uh, focus on, on polarizing issues. Now, you asked me a question. I am pro-life. I believe in reasonable exceptions which would be sexual assault, incest, and the life of the mother. Those are my guiding principles. I'm sorry, specifically on personhood, I understand that it's not really an issue, but it's something that you've been asked about at a debate, so I'll get to the material on it, but we're just going to be curious about it. I think it's a question. There's multiple personhood legislation out there. It's not been successful. Uh, I haven't read every piece of legislation out there, so what I want to give you, so we're absolutely clear, are my guiding principles around life. So I believe in the culture of life. I'm pro-life with reasonable exceptions. That's how I'll make decisions, Mark. As I look at legislation, it has to fall within those guiding principles. If personhood is defined as defining, you know, the moment an egg is fertilized, it, it is a person. So in, in no case is abortion acceptable. That's a personhood USA, the, the national group that is uh, pushing this legislation more on the state level now than on the federal level, but it's been introduced many times on the federal level too. If that is the definition, that would then be in contrast to your, your position on legalized abortion. So then, therefore, would you then not support personhood? So my guiding principle, are, I am pro-life with reasonable exceptions. Are you concerned about uh, being able to win a primary if you're you're not getting in the weeds on some of these issues with the, the people that will make the endorsement decision? And by reasonable argument, the primary is just a little bit bigger piece of the pie of that, that relatively narrow group of Republicans, which tend to be much more conservative than center-right Republicans or folks who might be out in the general election, who you see in the courting right now. Can you do it? Well, I, I'm, I'm working the court every day. So when we got into this race, and, and I'm not a politician, and I have not run for office before, I'm proud of that. I believe the single biggest issue we have in this country right now institutionally is we've created a professional class of politician, and it's killed us. It's not what the founding fathers envisioned. They envisioned a learn, earn, and serve model. And i got to tell you, Mark, as I've gone around this state, the number one issue that people have is the economy. And it's, they want a better job. They want wages to increase. Ever since Senator Franken took office, this economy has absolutely gone sideways. There's no argument with that. We've had the slowest post-recession rebound in the history of the country. And we, what they want are they want better jobs. And I know how to do that as a businessman. I know how to get this economy going. You know, Obamacare, Obamacare is estimated to cost the equivalent of 2.3 million jobs for the CBO, a nonpartisan organization. It's a job killer. I'm, I'm a businessman. I've advised small and mid-sized businesses my whole career. As I'm out around Minnesota, I can tell you, businesses are not hiring because they're concerned about Obamacare. They don't know how it's going to work. They're not hiring. I mean, that, that's, you know, you can look at the statistics. I'm telling you what I'm hearing. It's, it's stagnant. Um, 
you look at the energy industry. I'm a huge proponent of energy. We have, we are sitting on the doorstep of an energy renaissance that if we're allowed to take advantage of in a responsible way, we will see the best days of our country ahead of us. Not only is energy the number one source of high paying jobs over the next decade, but with low cost energy as a businessman, what I know is that will lead to a manufacturing renaissance because we'll be able to manufacture competitively on a global basis. On the topic of jobs, <coughs> where would you have fallen on yesterday's vote on that uh, pay, pay measure that was up before the Senate? I think all the Republicans opposed letting that debate move forward. Right. Have you been on that side or the keep the debate going? So I have, I have six children. Connor, my oldest, is in the back. I have five boys. I have my daughter, Molly. I want Molly to have the absolute same opportunities as my sons. And I'll work for, hard for that. I believe in equality of, uh, of opportunity. The best way that I can help Molly is to get this economy moving and focus on, you know, let's, let's approve the Keystone Pipeline. Let's fast track the 24 LNG facilities that are waiting to be built around this country. We haven't been energy independent since the early 1960s when John F. Kennedy was president. People forget that in World War II, the United States supplied seven-eighths of the oil that was used to prosecute that war on behalf of the Allies. This is a huge, huge game changer. And you know, one of the things I love about America is we're doers, we're innovators. If I had told you five years ago that we had the opportunity to be energy independent, you would have looked at me like I was crazy. But because of innovation, new technology with horizontal drilling, we have access to resources we've never had before. So that's, you know, I, I have a fundamental difference game plan than Senator Franken and, and President Obama. To Brian's question, that was a yes or no. I mean, would you have voted to move it but once again, I think it's the I think it's the wrong question. The right question is how do I get that's, a question. that's you how we asked if you were in the Senate yesterday. But I wasn't in the Senate yesterday. I hope to be in the Senate next January. These these are these are election year tricks. It's politics as usual. This same bill has come up in 2010, 2012, will come up in 2014. I want politicians and leaders to focus on how we get this economy growing. You talked about the economy, you said, and you said before that since Franklin took office, the economy has gone sideways. Is that Franklin's fault? And secondarily, Minnesota actually has a lower unemployment rate than most states, and it has the health exchange that it created that, that you started off saying was wrong. Do you think that that's despite the health exchange that the, the unemployment rate is actually low? Yeah, so, so Rachel, great question. So the, the economy, when I say it's, it's absolutely stagnated, I mean, uh, look at the latest report from the CBO. They, they've reduced their forecast for GDP growth from 3% to 2.5%. That has huge implications, huge implications. That's $1.7 trillion of lower revenues into the U.S. government over a 10-year period of time. And so I think since Senator Franken has been in office, what we've seen is a focus on increasing regulation on business. And we have not seen a focus on how we grow this economy. I think we need the right size regulation. I don't, I don't want to keep adding more and more regulation. We spent $1.7 trillion last year on regulatory compliance. That's more than the GDP of California. That's, that, that doesn't make sense to me. It's not pragmatic. I want to right-size regulation. I want smart regulation, not over-regulation. Rachel, as I've gone around this state, um, people are, they're really concerned about their financial security. They feel like we're falling behind. We have less money in our pocket because the economy's not going, wages aren't going up. But every expense is going up, whether it be food, gas, Energy, healthcare, people people have less money in their pockets. That doesn't need to be that way. I mean, we, we, we can see our best days in front of us if we have better leadership and better vision. Some of your opponents have said that 
you haven't been broadly accessible to the voting public as you should be. Um, as you said last year, we did this press conference with them. Can you give uh, some indication <coughs> of the plans are going forward for events like this, debates, or other places where broad public and free? Yeah, Doug, thank, thanks for the question. Um, you know, when I got in, I, I said we're going to do this in a different way. It's going to be a disciplined <coughs> way. We're going to balance my time and the campaign's time between grassroots, media, and fundraising. And we've done that, and, and I think we've been very, very successful. I'm very happy with the progress that we've made. We've we've done over 65 grassroots events. We've done 60 media events. We've done multiple debates. Uh, uh, I'm having a lot of fun. I mean, I love being out with people all around the great state of Minnesota. So we're, we're going to continue to, to follow this plan. And, and it's going to be grassroots, it's going to be uh, media, it's going to be fundraising. And the other thing I need to add in there is, is reaching out to all potential supporters and voters. And so it's not just Republicans, it's independents. About a third of our state in Minnesota consider themselves independent. I spend a lot of time talking to independents. I spend time talking to Reagan Democrats. People know that we're on the wrong track. We're not on the right direction. They want solutions. They want ideas. And as a businessman, as someone who's been a problem solver for the last 20 years, I think I can provide that. I think I have a plan for how we grow this economy. Speaking of fundraising, uh, you've led the pack on the Republican side in, in money barn or what did you do in the first quarter? You no, know, Ryan, we haven't we haven't publicly disclosed that. I, I think it'll come out next week. We had another very good fundraising quarter. I can I can tell you that um, people are really responding uh, well to the message, and, and frankly, I've been humbled and overwhelmed by the by the support. Last question. Your opponent said that you don't get very specific during the last. 25 minutes you've been asked about pay equity, personhood, and whether Minnesota should go into the federal exchange or create its own exchange. I haven't heard yes or no answers on any of those three questions. Do you plan to get more specific? You know, Rachel, what I think is really important with politicians is you understand, and with leaders, you understand their overriding philosophies. How do they make decisions? And so I've been very specific in this campaign as to how I make decisions. And it begins with my view of government my philosophy of government. I believe in limited but effective government. That's my true north. That's how I think about decisions. And I think we need politicians that tell us how are they going to think about things? Because it, you will have a gambit of situations that come in front of you that you will take votes on. And so people need to understand how you think. And so when I say limited but effective, you know, it's we got to we got to do a much better job of government. And, and frankly, I don't hear Republicans talking about that. We've done a very, very good job of talking about limited government for a long time, and not a good job of talking about effective government. So should voters expect that in the next seven months we'll get more specific? Or do you think you'll just tell them more about your philosophy and expect them to trust you? Yeah, I think, I think they need to know my philosophy, how I think about things. So I told you, uh, in, in terms of my philosophy on government, I believe in limited but effective government. Last question. The minimum wage debate, uh, the President wants it raised, uh, raised federally. What do you think about that? A lot of business people say it's a really bad idea. The poll that was released this week by Survey USA, I think, had something in the neighborhood of 60, 61, 62 percent of Minnesotans supporting it? What do you think of it? I think, uh, first of all, I think the minimum wage is a very important safeguard. Um, I do find it problematic that uh, you would have one single wage that would be across the whole country. I think New York has much different economic forces and, and issues that they're facing in Minnesota than Nebraska and California. But I, but I think I think it's a wrong question, Mark. The, the question is, the right question is, how do you get this economy? How do you how do you move this economy go forward? You know, I want to focus on the energy industry. I want to move, I want to right size regulation. I want to fast track LNG facilities. I want to improve 
the Keystone Pipeline. Just, just to clarify, did you, you uh, said you support the nine point four? Do you support the nine point three? Do you think that's in the well, that, 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 that's a state issue, they, and, and, and they made their their decision yesterday. What, 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 well, no. What, what, what I said, what I said is, from a federal standpoint, my focus would be on getting the economy going. I think, I think the, the the right question is, how do we get the economy moving forward? And that's what I'm going to focus on. As a senator, you don't always only get the answer when you think of the right question. Thank you. I I I, I appreciate everybody's time this uh, this morning. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you soon.